What if chess had fewer rules? Sorry. What if chess had no rules? Anarchy Chess is a subreddit where chess enthusiasts gather to say the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. They have an obsession with en passant, which is a niche rule in chess. They have a bot that flames you if you ever say pee pee, which weirdly happens a lot in this subreddit. And the way they revel in making chess the dumbest thing possible creates a safe haven for people who aren't great at chess to still enjoy the game. Needless to say, this subreddit has produced some pretty insane things, but none of them have ever been quite as notorious as the game. On Friday, August 7th, 2021, Reddit user Skurlock would make a post that would mark the beginning of an era. It was a picture of a perfectly normal chessboard, but with the title, Top Comment Picks the Next Move. Legal or not. This post instantly rocketed to the top of the subreddit as people in the comments threw out ideas on what the first move should be. They ended up making White do one of the things they love the most, one of their simple pleasures. The bong cloud opening. The bong cloud, of course, is a meme opening that provides literally zero strategic advantage. But normally, you would have to move your pawn before pointlessly moving your king. Since there were no rules, they decided to just capture their own pawn instead. Black responded by doing something better, something a normal cheater might do. They promoted one of their pawns to a queen. The only thing is, Skrlock didn't have another queen on hand, so he used a double-A battery to represent the newly crowned queen. Now, Black should have a pretty big advantage here, so White had to one-up them. And they did by saying, nuh uh give me that. That's mine now. And make it a 9-volt. That's right, White took Black's new queen and then promoted it to a 9-volt battery which is not a queen. It is no longer a queen. It is a 9-volt battery. You're probably thinking, hey, what does a 9-volt battery do in chess? So, three days in, and we have already gone off track. We've transcended the basic rules of the game, and we now have a piece with unknown properties. So, where do we go from here? How do things escalate? White draws two cards. We're no longer playing chess. White moves one rook on top of their other rook. Black puts a knife on f5, and then white buys a hotel next to it. Black responds by moving all of the pawns to the third row. All of them, even whites. But uh-oh, black sea pawn tests positive for COVID, so white sea pawn is contact tracing, they're both put into quarantine. Unfortunately, white's bishop was found to be a sex offender. Uh, we are lucky to no longer have it in our game. White moves on to sacrifice three pawns to summon the ultimate piece, the ever-powerful Chick-fil-A sauce, and then Black fianchettos a Pop-Tart, placing it on G7. And next, what I would call the first truly insane move of the game is played. Two knights go on a date at C5. Aww. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. That move isn't that insane. They've already actually played weirder moves than that. But it's not really about the move. It's about how they played it. User inexperienced128 wrote an over 1,000 word fanfiction describing the two knights going on a date. Yeah. As you can see, Anarchy Chess has fully given up any notion of trying to win this game, or even any notion of trying to make moves beneficial to them. The move on day 16 was a threat. White was not trying to one-up Black here, the move was instead a challenge to Skurlock himself. It was a villainous monologue, disavowing all previous commenters who made a move easy to interpret, easy to represent. This commenter didn't want to win the game, they didn't even want to make a funny move. They wanted Skurlock to fear them. Their move? King to E, Pi minus Pi I. Which, if you spell it out, spells pee pee. Now, for those of you who are unsure what this means, i is an imaginary number equaling the square root of negative one, which isn't real. So not only can this move not be played on a chessboard, this move physically cannot exist. Anarchy Chess's greatest minds were working around the clock to figure out how to represent this move visually, and a lot of them were scared for Skurlock. How would he do it? Could the game go on? The only option was to wait until tomorrow. 
He fucking did it. He suspended the king upside down on top of the chessboard from a little square he made himself. Nobody could doubt Skurlock after that and the game thrived. A second, smaller game of chess started on the side. A queen came back from the future. They Thanos snapped half the pieces and they even brought out the Uno reverse card. Unfortunately, I can't go over every single move in this video without making it way too long. I'll leave a link in the description to the full length of the game if you want to take a look. But speaking of length, how long was this game gonna last? Because theoretically, either side could just capture the opponent's king, ending the game. And they could do this at any point in time, but people just didn't want to do that. It was a lot more fun to just do funny shit back and forth, so Skurlock had to make the rules clear. The game would either be ended by a move, or it would automatically end on the 100th day. We have to remember that while Skurlock may have had one of the best ever ideas for a shitpost, he still had a life outside of it. He was doing this out of his college dorm or apartment or something, and he frequently had to take down and rebuild an ever-expanding monstrosity of a chessboard. In addition to this, he frequently had to buy things for the game. And if you're a college student, that can put some stress on you. Sometimes he couldn't post, and while a lot of the time strangers on the internet can be really weird and mean about things like this, Anarchy Chess was anything but. Well, actually, they were still definitely weird. But everybody fucking loved Skurlock. One time he posted that he had midterms coming up, so everybody on Anarchy Chess went back and upvoted this comment retroactively, telling him to just study and relax. All that being said, I really just want to show some of my favorite moments from the rest of the game, because I was checking the subreddit every day for this, and I want to share that with you. On day 32, his cat was in the background of the picture, so obviously the top comment was to pet the cat. The day after the cat was pet, a bishop started working on a time machine said to be finished on day 79 that would send the queen back in time to day 24 where she would move to before. On day 38, white passed. The day after that, they got Skurlock to post the game to a different subreddit dedicated to shitposting about flags and asked them to design a flag for the white side of the board. What they got was this. To quote the designer, it's got a stegosaurus on it. My favorite dinosaur. It's got 3.14 of them to symbolize the position of their king, and because pie is my favorite food. The E is there because white ends in the letter E. On day 50, Skrulog asked not for a move, but for a halftime show. And they told him to burn the rook that they declared as a witch on day 49, and to post a slow-mo video of it with Stayin' Alive playing in the background. On day 57, they played the Accelerated Bong Cloud, which, if you remember correctly, is the first move of the game, but this time on the smaller chessboard on the brick. <laughs> it is really starting to sound like I'm just saying gibberish, isn't it? I mean, I promise I'm, I'm reading off of a script here. These are all actual things that happen in the game. Uh, let's see, the Ron Weasleys made an alliance with the Fire Nation and the Twin Towers to start a drug cartel. Jesus Christ, uh, I needed to skip over a lot in order to make this video digestible, so just bear with me because I'm about to say a lot more bullshit. The last major arc in the game was the King Committee versus the Beam. See, a death laser started to charge up because a couple pawns murdered and sacrificed an FBI agent to the ultimate piece, the Chick-fil-A sauce. Then they told Skrlock to flip over one of the cards, and that was how many days they had until the beam fired. So then all of the kings, which there are now six of, form a king committee to stop it. And then the rook that was elected president also joins the committee because it's technically a ruler, and then a literal 12-inch ruler also joins using the same logic. But while all this is happening, the queen who was sent back in time to day 24 has been biding her time, waiting for this exact moment. She swoops in and uses the 12-inch ruler to move all of the pieces off of rows 4 and 5 out of the way of the death beam. This, however, upsets the dark god controlling the death beam, and it shifts its focus to the king committee. But here's the thing. Do you remember that rook that was declared a witch and set on fire in the halftime show? Turns out that is the exact same rook that is currently the president in the king committee. Turns out he's immortal. Skurlock said that he doused it in alcohol and surrounded it in tissue paper, but it still wouldn't burn. Its immortality allowed it to survive the death beam, and it was the only piece left standing from the king committee. Now in a power vacuum, the rook seizes control and looks to execute any pieces that were still loyal to the black king. 
The queen from the future, filled with regret and knowledge of what will happen if nothing is done, looks within herself, pulls the pin on her grenade, and charges at the rook. The rest of the game serves as a bit of an epilogue, with White's H-Pawn moving down the board and promoting into an upside-down rook and then being elected president. You might look at the number here and think, wait, there's still a lot more of the game to be played. But the game never actually reached day 100. Two posts after the Chosen One was elected president, Skurlock stopped posting. See, he had posted a fair amount about burnout from school, and posts started to become less and less frequent as time went on. There were some people that really wanted to hang on to the game, to see it out to its end. But I think most of us knew that the game was over. Confirmation came five months later for us, with a post that read, Moving out today. Sorry it couldn't last forever. Thanks for the fun journey. And if we rewind five months prior, we see that the last move of the game wasn't even meant to be a move at all. See, it came after Skurlock hadn't posted for a month. And the top comment, the one everybody upvoted at the top, just read, Return of the King. The next day, Skurlock makes that move by posting the last ever picture of that glorious board with months of shitposts behind it, and he gives us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Wait, before you go. Shirts. Wow, those are super cool shirts. Uh, thanks so much for watching my video, everybody. I don't have a Patreon or anything like that. So if you like this video, the best way to support me is subscribing and sharing this video with people. And if you have a couple bones to spare, throw them out some hats. That's right, we've got hats too. Uh, so mosey down over to www.vasectomy.shop for all your vasectomy clothing needs. We've done a lot of work to make sure these clothes are actually super high quality. Um, thank you guys so much for your support. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, bye, see you in the next video.